yourself. So the first one is Pam Atchison, who we've been using as our guinea pig on the, the VMS this morning um, at Napa Elementary School. And she has some goodies that she wants to show you. And by the end of day two, 
We had ourselves pretty much a garden. These were yeah. <laughs> the kids that came out to build, and that was our day two crew. Okay. So then we started having the classes come out, and then we started planting, and then we started out with um, you know a minimal amount of planting material and. What we were doing at that time was the principal was on board with us. We would have these three classes come out every single week from their classroom, and they would come out, and they'd all sit down, and we'd give them a lesson, and then we'd go work and get our hands dirty in the garden, and we started just slowly. You can see the benches in the back. Those we just stole off the playground. They were graffiti. <laughs> we got some you know, paint remover and cleaned them up, and we found an old bench somewhere, and somebody donated another bench, so we just, we just made do. Okay, and then we planted on the outside, we put in some drip irrigation system. We showed the kids how to do that so that we could get it on an automatic watering thing. Although we don't have, we're not allowed to have a timer. We're not allowed to have that. But we have to come in and hand water. But this actually helps a lot because when we first get to the garden, we just turn on the drip system, let it drip the whole time we're there in the garden, and two and a half, three hours later, it's watered, we're done, we turn it off and go home. Okay, here's some of the kids helping with the drip irrigation system. We put in a little, uh, on the perimeter, a little butterfly garden, and we put in a little succulent garden. We put in some roses. We put in a little variety of things so the kids could see a little bit of variety. And as time went on, and there's our little sewer grave here working around. You can see the kids love to post for animal crackers there. <laughs> and uh, we can move those benches around, by the way, for lots of different configurations, which actually worked out really nice. The kids love to participate. They're actually very interested and involved. And um, this is Mr. Winkleman, who's also Master Gardener from my class. And the, uh, I explained about the outdoor benches. And anyway, what we do now is we have garden club, because the new principal, who is now taking over the school, um, is really trying to get back to academics. And she doesn't want the kids to leave the classroom during school hours, so she won't let them come out to the classroom, mm -hmm. to our garden classroom during the day. So what we've done is come, come up with a completely after-school program now. So now we just have garden club. And what we've done to also to make it fun for the kids and also to keep track, because otherwise you just have kids wandering in and out. We have a roster they sign in at the beginning of the class, and we know who's attended and how many weeks you know, they've been in a row. We've made up name tags for the kids like this so that when they come in, mm. we, have, we know who they are. It helps to get to, us to know who they are. So we can say, Christina, stop that. Or, Jason, sit down, and uh, it helps a lot. And then uh, the kids love to water, so they, they, they get totally crazy with the watering. We have to teach them to water the plants and not each other. There's the kids watering there. And uh, the garden has just grown. Now, last year we had a, um, a day where we harvested all of our vegetables that we grew, the carrots and the radishes and the lettuces and the broccoli and everything. And we had a big feast in the garden. We did huge salad, and the kids love to participate, and they just enjoy really eating what they grow, which is fabulous. And we, this is part of our uh, butterfly garden area. Uh, so one of the things I would suggest to you is establish rules. We do have a list of rules when you come into the garden. Uh, we have the kids participate in creating those rules, so that they decide what was important, like no running in the garden, and you know nobody fights, and everybody shares, and things. Establish structure in a routine so the kids know that when they come in, they need to put their book bag over here, they need to sign in, etc. Keep your lessons short and work with hands-on activities so the kids can get their hands dirty, which is really good. So that garden has grown up, and this year, I really literally just went in the door and said, hi, you don't know me, 
but my name is Pam, and we're going to be doing this school garden over here at Neff Elementary School. If you're wondering if you'd like to help us out with some new donations, oh, cool. you'd be surprised how many people will just respond to that and say, sure, we'd love to help. And what we also did when we put up our sign in the garden, we gave acknowledgments to the people that had donated, so thanks to Stock Lumber and stuff like that, so that everybody, every parent, who, you know, teacher walking by can see who donated to the garden. And that is a great excuse for you to use to those vendors yes. that <clears throat> we post at the garden so the entire neighborhood knows that you gave to our garden. So, hey, they always want the economic benefit from you, you know. So <coughs> absolutely make that point that they are going to be publicized and then you can say whatever publicity materials you are going to distribute that you make sure that people know that they contributed to the garden because naturally they're in business so they want to know that they're getting quote unquote free publicity and you can give them that letter right we exactly and that that's letter. what that letter is for that was on mm -hmm. the donation letter um, <clears throat> and Valerie uh, noted that that's last year's information is 2009 so we're going to update that so it'll be 2010 um, information on there, the numbers that Master Partners help. It's just a little um, question on detail. Your signage, what materials are you using for your signage so that they don't get all weathered? Oh, actually, we had a professional um, metal sign made that is not only coated with plastic on the outside of it to protect it, but Ann Elder also had a brilliant idea that she has an anti graffiti paint that we painted on it. You put on three coats of it and then it has a special removal. So God forbid we get graffiti, yeah. we can just come in and wipe it off and restore the sign really? with pristine beauty. Mm -hmm. So we have a double sided sign. We actually put half of it on the one side of the chain link fence and the other half on the chain link fence. We drilled holes through it and put wires so that we actually strapped it like back to back yeah. to hold it so you can read the sign from both sides. And is that where you put all your things on there as yes. well? It's all, it's all at the bottom. As a matter of fact, I actually had it on there, but we didn't show it okay. close up. But it says the Nap Elementary Learning Garden, and then there's a little proverb there, and then it has all the things at the bottom. So it's a cute little sign. It's always good to add to your sign if you have a, like public open hours, certainly of a community garden, and also that you have a contact person or at least a phone number. So that if somebody's driving by and they want to find out more about the garden, they'll know when they can come to it whenever it's open or a person to contact, a phone number or an email address. Because you want that publicity. You want people to connect with you. And you will get some gripey people who say, you know, what do you got all those weeds in the garden for? Which, of course, just means your carrots that you're letting go to see. Um, and then you can explain that. but. <coughs> That's part of the whole process. Okay, there was one other question. Yeah. Um, yes, this is a, you had a school garden where when the classes came, they all did <coughs> all of those little plots that you had, rather than a classroom garden where they each had uh, each well, class actually, had their own section. Yes, sometimes good, that's what they do. That's a good point. We actually started with that. Originally, we assigned this one to Mr. Jones's fifth grade right. class, and this was Mrs. Smith's third grade class. We found out quickly that it's better to have a communal garden where everybody, you just plant the tomatoes in the sunny one and you plant the lettuce in the shadier one and stuff like that and everybody shares because class, third grade classroom, Mrs. Jones may abandon her garden very quickly and never come back and take care of it. So by having it communal right now, we actually get the best of both worlds. We can rotate the crops in and out and wherever the best spot for that particular plant is. And you will find out, like Pam said, she started one way and then they kind of evolved. You know, sometimes when you want to do square foot gardening, you've got the strings out there. And, and so you have to start somewhere. Whatever way you start, you may end up evolving just because of what the site is demanding or the teachers or whatever. So it's, it's kind of just see where you are. You'll see examples of master gardeners who've done just about any variation there is and sometimes they do change but it really depends just on your group as it ends up. Thank you. One last question. Yes. What was your timeline? <coughs> oh, we, we started um, doing the discussion in fall of 2008. We actually did our first work day, work day January 31st, 2009. Our second work day was in February 2009 and by April 1st we were planning to be working in the garden. So the whole thing was done in less than three months. Wow. Okay. Thanks, Pam. Thank you.
having been at two schools recently, one where they really had a nice garden program going that Quaco initiated, and then this last year he got uh, reassigned to another school, so he is now getting them all jazzed with starting the garden. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I've been talking for a long time. <laughs> okay, I'll make it very brief. And um, my name is uh, Kwek Wanor, and uh, I'm a principal at uh, Chapman Elementary. I used to be a principal at um, President of New Elementary School. And so I'm going to tell you a tale of two cities, so to speak. <laughs> a tale of two, two schools. Now, I will be talking and not stand, I will probably sitting or standing. Now, um, uh, when I got to president about uh, six years ago, I saw all this real estate over there. And I thought, what a nice thing it would be to have um, apple orchards and um, just as palliate against, you know, the land um, fence. So I had a dream and uh, you look at all, all that green stuff there and said if you're a gardener uh, you want to be able to turn that into some kind of um, um, eating ground. And so I, um, I started a, a beautification program uh, in which um, you go beautify into school uh, on the last Saturday of February, and then the kids will have the blooms uh, by the time they go out of uh, home for the education. So this is uh, Miss Wayne with a bunch of kids uh, on the truck that um, um, we uh, we sent to uh, fetch our plants. So the teachers and parents and community members, you know, are planting side by side. This this school. That's just way moving around there. Uh, these uh, ladies, uh, as you can tell, they don't interest on plants, but they don't quite work. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they have an accent to that. Uh, the kids, of course, um, uh, it's all about the next generation, as I said. And uh, we also uh, wrote grants for, to, uh, for beautification. Uh, from the city of LA, and so we use that money to do some murals, and all these um, these were themed murals uh, that was based on an open court. Those of you who are teachers or MSD, you know that's our uh, bread and butter until the end of this year. Uh, these are some of the, um, and we all were able to plant this garden. Um, we use some of the money to get uh, umbrellas and for reading. And uh, we use part of the um, education money from Marquis. And so uh, then one day I was in my office and I saw a little grant proposal. Uh, it came across my desk and um, it, it was targeted to the Carson area. And I said, okay, let me give it a shot. So I called them and they said, okay, you, you can apply. And so it was a, just a sliver of a grant, a page a green space that you have, and my thought was, oh, since I'm going to get a big grant, look at all this land. We're going to have fun, have a farm there. But we had a different idea. Uh, I got the grant, and um, so we had the children draw a composite of what it is that they will see in a, a, a school garden. And so they had all kinds of ideas, and um, the um, graphic, the graphics uh, people from Home Depot uh, put this in this composite. And so these are the case drawings, the conceptions of the, of the garden. And so uh, Earth, uh, on Earth Day, on April 29, 22nd, uh, 2009, we had, after battling the district's uh, the bureaucracy, uh, the day finally arrived for installation. Now the problem with uh, the schools I've been at is that usually you would have uh, teachers who are interested in gardening and then they'll go and budget the principal 
and you know, I tried to initiate these things, and uh, we don't know from the time that they kind of uh, a bit of dirt. Uh, so we had about 200 volunteers from Home Depot, and uh, they brought machinery, uh, and uh, they came, they lighted them, they built you know, these raised beds, and the kids got into the act. Uh, after eight, eight hours, we had a, a reading garden installed, like, you know, one of those um, extreme makeovers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, these were some of the stars hmm. from Galaxy because of the Galaxy Foundation and Home Depot Foundation uh, that uh, provided a grant. And so we had a reading garden and uh, the kids that um, won the contest for the composite, you know, took a picture of the coordinators myself. And of course, there we have the previous one. Hopefully, they are reading the awards. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, the challenges were to keep the garden, keep, keep up the garden, and still uh, um, keep on dreaming. Uh, the garden, uh, this is the garden now, uh, is maturing. Uh, we also had um, uh, another used part of the grant to do uh, this tile mural and call it a uh, green garden. And then I moved, you know, one um, June day, my director and superintendent said, um, why don't you do me a favor and go to another school? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay. <laughs> now, and the, the staff took it very, very hard because uh, our garden had just matured and so, in appreciation, they said, okay, in appreciation of your support to our students and gardens, we, dedica we dedicate this, the doctoral Emmanuel and all of the gardens. So that was nice. Uh, and so I came to Chapman. <laughs> now, now, Chapman, uh, the, the notice you see on the marquee was uh, by a little fourth grader that passed away suddenly in mm. his sleep. So, uh, anyway. It's got nothing to do with our garden, but uh, this is uh, the marquee was put in the year, uh, maybe a few months before I arrived, and we had all this um, unplanted area. And so when you're a gardener and you see space, you say, "Wow, what are they doing with this space?" <laughs> so I uh, talked to the PTA people. We had. Uh, a few meetings, you know, to talk about gardening because the first that I was interested in gardening and they had heard about my <coughs> uh, president. So we put, um, we set February the 26th as a day for our garden uh, unification day, and that is uh, two gentlemen from our school who came like they want to work, but I'm not sure how much they did. And we have some parents too. Um, this is uh, trying to change the this, this space. Uh, I had um, a landscape artist give us a composite of all kinds of natural uh, plants we can plant so we can give our school a good curb appeal. So we had um, agapanthas and um, uh, mostly agapanthas and, uh, and then of course we wanted to, we had um, uh, some um, flowering um, plants to make this look good. And then this is the beginning uh, of our, well, these are annuals that we put in. So, but then there was a problem of water. Now, um, because the area had two large juniper trees that were felled before they put in the, um, the marquee, the roots had uh, broken up the, the um, uh, 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 broken up the, uh, the irrigation system. So. Um, it was um, um, 
it was a challenge to talk to the uh, maintenance and operations people because you know they, they, they do not want to usually um, modify the school grounds without you know um, real uh, permission. So I budget him, and finally uh, he put in an irrigation system. So right now. Our plans are coming up, and uh, maybe next time, towards the end of the year, uh, I'll come and show you our product. And um, the, but doing school gardens have a lot of challenges, especially when you do not have uh, people that are gun ho. I mean, if you live in the uh, Gardena area, you can come to my school, and uh, then we can talk about um, uh, vegetable gardens because we have lots of hard surfaces and what I want to do is have planters and so that uh, planters that will be assigned to classrooms so they can grow vegetables. Right behind my office I have a little a dirt area there about 12 feet by 4 and I dug it up yesterday because I want to demonstrate uh, the three um, the three sisters and the corn squash and beans at the back there so the kids can be motivated to learn how to how important it is and fun it is to do gardening. But we always always have uh, challenges and the challenge is just like the ecology we have is how to sustain what we have. And that president, even though I left um, almost a year ago, they've been able to sustain the, the beauty of the place. Ms. Wayne has taken on the mantle, and Ms. Peterson uh, doing a good job of um, helping out with the, um, the garden project. And so that's my brief uh, five minute -er. So uh, if you have any question, then you are, you are in, um, as I said, I'm a chaplain. So if you are uh, in the Gardena area, please drop by and then we can talk. So mm -hmm. and we have a lot of space for us to grow. On the roster of master gardeners, he is, you'll find an or, but um, we have him down as his nickname, which is Kwaku. So even though you've seen Emmanuel, you will not see Emmanuel on the roster, but he's the only an or there is. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jerry Miller is Vigilante. <laughs> uh, she's going to talk to you about gardening as a job opportunity. Jerry has been one of those creative people that started just working at a school garden. And then she has created and created and created uh, layer on layer of how she has made it her livelihood right now. Yeah. So she's going to inspire you. Great. Okay. Thanks, Hi, everyone. Hello. And um, congratulations on making an excellent choice. Um, I am here to tell you there is life after volunteering, although once a volunteer, always a volunteer. Um, yes, in 2006, I was certified. And along with some other stellar master gardeners who that year who have gone on to do absolutely remarkable things, both in school gardens. Oh my god, you got it, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I end up joyfully meeting and, and coming together with um, people I've met through my journey with HDL. Dave is one of them, so um, I'm sure he can lend his own perspective to it. Um, I was volunteering in my son's elementary school for a few years before I became certified and realized that the teachers were relying on me to do a lot of the teaching and I had to have a deeper understanding of the science and ecology behind it all. So after my certification, um, our school garden grew and became very su successful and I ran it for 10 years and passed on all the knowledge and the curriculum to the teachers who decided to go ahead and run with it from the last year on. So they're doing very well. And it was nice to sort of birth the baby and nurture it and get it on its way. And that's really what we all want to do is build skill sets with the people that we're teaching so that they'll be able to go on and sustain whatever seeds we plant. 
Um, so that's really the goal of whatever work you do. So I went on and decided um, a couple years ago, actually, to just kind of spread knowledge around. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with my experiences. Um, and I discovered Facebook. And also, you know, most of us, all of us are affected and continue to be affected by the recession. But what I started to, to find once I put my Facebook page up, which is Homegrown Edible Landscapes on Facebook. It's um, Homegrown Edible Landscapes. Oh, and by the way, I left some cards back on the desk. If you want to fan the page, please, I, I'd love to talk to you. Um, I put out there on the page one day, anybody need some advice, having trouble? I couldn't believe the response. And it was mostly because what we were going through as a nation and, um, and, and, and families was, was at once horrible and traumatic, but also a rebirth of something. <coughs> and those of us who do this, we realize how valuable this is for our own The rest of the nation really didn't quite appreciate it as much until 2008. All of a sudden, even the, the population that we considered, you know, more affluent, who we didn't serve before, suddenly had the rug pulled out from underneath them. People who had solid jobs, who never thought of themselves as precarious, had no income. And even if you ask food um, security people, uh, food banks, they'll tell you they were seeing people in their lives that they never saw before. Food banks were seeing families. They were seeing lots of people suddenly that they'd never seen in their lives before. And so um, HGL became kind of, kind of a springboard. Um, I went that first summer in my car, drove <coughs> all over, God, it seemed like all over every county. But, and I just paid a visit to whoever it was and gave them some ideas and some guidance. Of course, gas prices, I thought at the time, were the highest they could ever go, but of course I'm wrong. Um, and that curtailed me a bit, so I started concentrating more communicating to folks through Facebook. And what started by with just an experiment is now almost 10,000 fans worldwide. So it's been a real experience and a joy for me to connect with fellow gardeners that way. But it's also led to business opportunities. And when I stopped being able to um, give my time for free, because obviously the recession had affected our family as well, people started asking me to come out to visit them for money, for pay. And though it was a kind of a foreign concept, I said, oh, okay. So um, we started that way. And so HGEL now is in its second year. And uh, I'm concentrating also, without really planning it, these things happen by accident most times. So don't ever discount something that originally sounded really bizarre to you. Just keep your minds open. Um, I started trying to investigate commercial gardens, gardens in places that were open, visually open to everyone. Um, I had been walking around a new resort that opened uh, a year and a half ago up in Palos Verdes. Some of you may have heard of it here in the, uh, up there. It was built where the old Moline land was. And it was on very protectable. Mm -hmm. You know, they went through decades trying to get the conserved land to, to give them permission. In return for being able to build the hotel, they had to keep their property open and public access to all the trails and the coastline. So in walking through the hotel, I walked past what I didn't know at the time was a restaurant with four raised beds. And it was filled with peanuts. And I thought, ooh, somebody needs a master <laughs> So also doing a little research, realized that the, the resort was in a, a lot of financial trouble at the time. And I knew, you know, when people start cutting things, the first thing you go is the landscape and the garden. Nobody puts money into their gardens, really. If under under some financial constraints. So I decided to write a letter to the managing director of the hotel, offered my services as a master gardener for free. 
in return, they have to pay for the plant material, but they have allow me to market my company. And as I was just mentioning to you about putting a sign up, I have to tell you I'm living proof. You put the signs up. People will see them, and they, and especially now when this has been elevated to such a high point for people going around the food, it will resonate with them and we will get responses. Um, my response from that first year, I decided I had agreed to do this for nothing for them for a year, um, was great. It was wonderful. And every Friday I would be there, people, the community would come in and walk past. You know, most of my clients were not guests in the hotel. These were people that lived in the South Bay and, you know, drove up and decided to hike the trails. Um, they would just sit and talk to me for, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. And it was a wonderful connection that uh, I enjoyed a lot as well. So I took that idea down into the South Bay and decided whenever I was walking, if I passed a, a vacant, I don't care if it was a vacant cube like this, it was dirt with nothing in it. I'd walk in. Um, many times I had my badge in my pocket, so give me a moment today. Um, and I met with the owners and said, hey, I'll put, I'll put something in here. I will create something that's a teachable moment. You pay for the plants. I give you the labor. I take care of it for a year. And you allow me to teach them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I have now three, including Tara Man, now I have four commercial gardens. Um, thankfully, Terranea went through their year with me and was very satisfied, so I now have a contract with Terranea to go on with my little garden. Um, and, I'll, and I will continue to do um, classes with them. Actually, Daisy, I have to say, was the first. What I do is I, um, every season that I trans, uh, translate the garden into a new planting scheme, I put a note out there on Facebook, oh, I need volunteers. Uh, and David was one of the first ones that showed up to install the very first garden in October of 2009. So he owns a little patch of that garden, which is <laughs> true without any volunteer that does anything for any community garden. Um, anyway, um, you, I brought some pictures. I know this isn't going to be very visible to you, but I can leave these for you um, to look at. This is a little beach cafe, um, busy street. It's a teensy weensy little garden. The, the point here was that this food is very, very small space. This is actually the chef and I, the owner and the chef, standing in that little garden. There are two three by six boxes. Three by three, three by six boxes. This is a close-up of one. I mean we were growing watermelons in here, believe it or not. They would just drink down and find their way. I mean, you know. So don't be afraid, even small spaces, if you use as Yvonne was mentioning, square foot gardening, biointensive gardening strategies, you can do it. It doesn't take a lot of space many times. Especially in a production garden when you're harvesting a lot, you're automatically keeping that plant into um, keeping a small space. That's the picture of the raised bed. I'm almost up, so I'll go through here. and. Um, I just wanted to show you if I can get I did, um, here's the turn and garden. It's not a really good picture. You don't see all of them. But again, this is a small area. It's four raised beds that are larger. They're about seven feet by five feet wide. But um, he gets a lot out of this, too. I also designed an aromatherapy garden for a spa. So, you know, you can let your imaginations run wild. But there is value in what you do. Don't ever forget that. As long as you think outside the box and don't be afraid to pass. The worst they can say is no. But no damage done, you go on to another one. You will always find someone that's interested in what you know. Okay, good luck, guys. <laughs>